Although I am here with you. This is on my heart to tell people about this, and I hope you listen to me on this one and understand what I'm trying to say. The letter of the law works death, and the Spirit gives life. Paul talks about that in Romans. Okay? Then he says to the Gentiles in his letters, if you try to keep the commandments, you can, you'll be a debtor of the whole law. Okay? Right? They shouldn't, at the time, understand this is a new thing to them. Paul wanted to make sure they received the Holy Spirit by belief on Jesus, that they'd be in spirit unto themselves. But I point out to you something. What were the works they were doing? Talked about containing the spirit of the law. If they do things of the law naturally, see by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so a lot of Christians, they shy away from the law completely. I don't want to touch that, blah, blah, blah. Let me show you why they're making a mistake. Okay, and that one. If a, And I'll show you, first of all, I'm going to show you the mistake of actually trying to observe it. You say, what are you talking about, Scott? And I'll explain to you by letter. Seventh-day Adventists, for instance, have deemed the law, so your requirement, and that's where the first mistake is in their church, that you must keep the Sabbath on a Saturday as a kind of reformation to the Catholics keeping it on a Sunday. They're both wrong. Let no man judge you on what holy do you keep or don't keep. Okay? Now, you know, if they get it, okay, man on a personal level, not as a requirement, but as an act. Okay? Of freedom. These are requirements, and that this is where I would be completely against it. And we, th those of us that have taught of the Holy Spirit, would definitely be against this. Okay, if you make those things a requirement. But what is the spirit of the law? And that's what I want to get into. The letter works death; the spirit gives life. Let us learn stuff we know. What is the spirit of the Sabbath? It's about rest. So legalistically, you must keep it on a Saturday. No, I say Sunday. Here's what the Spirit says in freedom. The wisdom of it is it's a man on a work six days or a woman. Take one day off a week. If you happen to be off Wednesday, your day off, and, and Thursday's your day off, that's your Sabbath. Don't do any creative works on that day. Uh, take a breath, honor God, meditate on the Lord, look to do His work. We should do that every day. But it, it, enter into God's rest. The great Sabbath is this thousand year millennial reign. It's a great Sabbath. Don't you know that's why Jesus always healed on the Sabbath to try to show my people who he was? <laughs> the Messiah is the great Sabbath rest of, of Yudevave, of Yove. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ. Yove is he who is. It's the right way to pronounce Jehovah, Yove. So it just means he who is. It's not mystical or anything. There's no magic behind it either. It's not magic. It's not mysticism. He exists. That's what it means. And so, taking a look at the spirit there, spirit says, look, wisdom, take a day off. Refresh yourself. Don't work day after day after day after day. The Lord didn't do that. And you'd say as a Christian, you know something? The Holy Spirit's kind of, I see where you're coming from. I think I'm going to take a day off. It's not, you're not required to. Remember, all things are permissible and all things are profitable. Some things are profitable. This is not a work that you'll be justified, by the way, but your walk will be fuller. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is something that you will grow and have fullness of things. But understand, here's another thing to understand the letter of the law, the letter versus spirit of the law. In the letter of the law, it says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, things are determined. So in, in a capital murder case, if somebody or two or three witnesses, hey, that person killed that person, you ever put to death. Okay. So there are two things the spirit of the law is telling us. We're going to go in the spirit. Not that we don't live under the law, not by letter. We're going to go by spirit. The two things that, that the spirit tells us about the Torah there is make sure that when it is, yeah, something's happening and you're going to accuse somebody of something, it better be certain that you do something. Too often today in Christianity, I see people are too quick to accuse. But the Holy Spirit says be, make, be patient. Be sure that the matter is true. Did not the Holy Spirit write the law? What's the spirit of the law say then? Right? Not necessarily by letter. There has to be two or three witnesses. It's telling us by spirit to make sure. Why, why two or three witnesses? To make sure the matter is certain. So we don't go slandering. Was well, Avoid slandering. Make sure matter. See how that lines up with the New Testament? See? Don't be afraid of looking at the laws of, of Moses or in like it's some oh, I'm a Christian I can't look. no you should actually I think it's very beneficial but by spirit not by letter all I mean 
Not by all, because you get in your head, okay, I'm going to keep this holiday. Jesus fulfilled a lot of those holidays. Did I it, understand the, okay, why would you want to keep it? For instance, the Day of Atonement, right? I think I'm going to fast. Okay, why, why, let me ask you quick, why would you do that? Are you doing it to honor God? Every day is a Day of Atonement in Jesus Christ. Every day. I don't, we shouldn't say fast every day. Every day should be about forgiving others, not just one day a year. Every day. It's a day that we atone, that we walk uh, in faith and in grace. Not just one day. Okay, so what's the point there? See, that's why I would say, that's where the letter will work. How will it work? Yeah, if you start doing that, right? Then you'll keep the Sabbath, on the Sabbath. You'll start thinking you're good. Oh, I'm good. I'm holy. I keep the law. Yeah, and that's what Paul meant. But you offend in one thing, you're guilty of all. Paul was trying to stop self-righteousness, that you wouldn't be boasting of your own works. Paul said, I could if I want to, I'm a Jew, whatever, but I don't. He don't want you doing that. He don't want us boasting of our works, that we go by faith and grace, not by works. You understand that? How is it at work when it just told you to learn the wisdom and by spirit of the Torah, by the Holy Spirit? There's nothing wrong with that. What did Jesus say? Whoever does his commandments teaches others to do so should be called greatest in the kingdom. I don't know. Uh -oh, I want to be great now. Uh, let me just stop it. I'm going to think I'm going to do it. Uh, let me stop here. By spirit, not by letter. That's what he's getting at. Okay. By spirit. Don't do it by letter. Do it by faith. How would I know these things? For instance, Sukkot, right? Wisdom that the Holy Spirit gives me. He'll give you that too. The Feast of Tabernacles is called Sukkot. Why is that commanded? The Holy Spirit told me. Okay, I'm going to do a work. I'm going to go sit outside, which my people don't even, even Orthodox don't even follow the Torah by the letter of law, what, it, what it's supposed to be. But forget the letter of law, okay? Spirit of it. So we're going to go and dwell for seven days outside in a tent. But why are we doing that? What's the point? To be thankful. See, part of the Holy Spirit is thank, be thankful, be kind. Ah, well, why would, how would we learn to be thankful? We're supposed to look back being Jews, at the fathers that were in the desert wandering, right? They went from tent to tent to hill to hill. They were wandering before they got into the land of Israel. So it was to be appreciative, saying, okay, we're in the pleasant land now. We have a great possession here through this. So let us, it, it, let us keep this holiday to show, okay, that we are appreciative and thankful for what we have. So they go outside and they live it hard for seven days. Wow, those people really had it hard. I now I really I understand in my heart now by living that once man I understand what the people in the desert went through I never want to go through that I thank God for what I have you become thankful see let me show you another spirit of law versus letter it's commanding the law that we put the uh, that we put the law on our doorposts wherever we're at it's called the mezuzah in Judaism tonight right that's a mezuzah the letter of law is a work of means nothing today in Judaism Orthodox. They go by, they kiss the thing. Well, what are you doing? You're seeing a uh, mezuzah. What, what is that? You know, that's a, you're a Jewish. must have a mezuzah on the door. That's not what the Holy Spirit meant from that law. That was meant to be wherever we woke up in the morning, we would see it, the Ten Commandments in front of us, clearly written on every doorpost. Okay, don't murder, don't steal. Okay, don't do that. We keep doing it. Eventually, it would become a part of us. But it didn't work because there's nothing good that dwells in us, like Paul talks about. We failed the law. The law is holy and good. Okay. Are you following me? What's the spirit of the law say? That the laws, what's the spirit getting at? You see it enough, it'll be on your heart on the inside. So today it's not even, what is it? What kind of work is that? Oh, I'm good. I'm a, I keep kosher. I'm a good Jew. I keep Sabbath. And I have a mezuzah. Oh, wow. Really? Those three, that's really, you're really righteous. How do you feel about your neighbor? Why well, rob him and steal from him? Oh, yeah. You're not good to your neighbor. You don't. You're not kind to the widow and the orphan. They're charitable, but you're a holy person by keeping a lie. Got it? Because you keep those three things. That's your pocket. Self righteousness. See the difference? There ain't nothing wrong with keeping the spirit of the Torah, not by letter, but by spirit. And that's what the Holy Spirit should teach you. This. It's a fullness, but you learn these things by the Holy Spirit. It comes in you, dwells in you. Start doing these things by nature. If indeed the Holy Spirit dwells in you, and that's how you know you're going to be saved. Or I'll say that's how you know you're saved by some people might be a little offended. Said, that's how you know you're saved. That you're going to obtain to the resurrection of the dead and the translation of the saints. That you're walking according orderly to that. Okay? But I would say this. 
before uh, uh, what I'm doing is not Judaizing. A Judaizer is saying, I, if I was a Judaizer, I would tell a Christian, you must keep the Torah. You must follow that. If you're just ignoring that Torah, you're not going to be saved. That's ridiculous. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in you by faith and grace, I could say that. And that comes via Jesus Christ. You following me? There's a difference here. Okay, to understand what which, Judaization, the Judaizers, like, you have to be circumcised. Or, no, you don't. Paul's against the Judaizers trying to get the people to work by letter to be literally become part of the covenant of Sinai. We're not under the covenant of Sinai. We're under the covenant of grace and faith of Jesus Christ and his blood. We're bought and paid for by that. Okay? But Jesus Christ walked orderly according to the Torah. And he also said we should we should take a look at it. Okay? So remember that. Not as a requirement. Remember that. If you're in Christ Jesus, you are not required to do the works of the law. That is not required. What is required is that we have faith, we, we stay away from sin, okay, but we do it by faith and love, and fear of the Lord too, follow me? And if we happen to sin, there's an advocate in heaven, I mean, even the man, Jesus Christ, who prays to the Father on our behalf, he makes intercession, okay? Following me? So, this is not a different God, okay? This is a different revelation, I want to get to that for a second too, about dispensationalism. There is some truth a dispensationalism, but not as a as an absolute doctrine there isn't. We live in different time periods, right? There was a time where we were under the law, and there was a time, and there was this time we're under faith and grace. The last two thousand years, Jesus didn't make. If Jesus didn't die and do what he did, we wouldn't be here right now. You that know the Holy Spirit know that. Okay. So there are different dispensations of time, okay, in different eras, and stuff. But dispensationalism. Teach you a thing again. I consider my brother Noah Hines. I call him. He's a, a, he's a young man who, who hears from the Holy Spirit correctly, in my opinion. And what was I going to say about him? Oh yeah, about how people in dispensationalism, they're oh we're saved a different way than they were in the Torah. Okay, and Noah's like, well that's kind of insulting. What are you saved by law? No, and Noah's right to say it. No. The law saves the blood, and this is the problem I have with dispensationalists too, and all that. They they equate Jesus as equal with the sacrifice. That's an insult. Jesus' sacrifice and blood is way greater a million times of that precious blood versus some dumb animal and a goat that can never take away sin. And under the law, murderers couldn't be forgiven. There was no uh, sacrifice for a murderer. Through Jesus Christ, a murderer can be forgiven. All sins can be forgiven except for the sin of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is almost impossible to do these days. Hard to do it. If you think you've done it, you probably haven't. <laughs> Those that have done it would even feel any shame or anything. But maybe I'll talk about that in another, in another uh, time. Yeah. So you see, God's the same as he was before he was yesterday. So it was funny listening to Noah talk. I don't get, I'm not laughing because I know the Spirit's with him, but he's not, he doesn't know the Hebrew terms. So he's kind of like fumbling through it a little bit. But it's the Holy Spirit guiding him. Tell him, look, Christ was, it was in the, uh, Old Testament, well, he's right, but he, when he's saying Christ, he uses that as a proper name, more so Jesus than Christ. Christ means anointed. So you would be saying that uh, uh, salvation was anointed in the Old Testament. Well, it wasn't revealed yet, so it wasn't uh, uh, anointed. It wasn't readily revealed like it is now. That's where the dispensationalists make a mistake. That's a di in a dispensation, but it's not a complete change. Okay, and, and God doesn't change in, in that regard is what I'm saying. There's no change in God. So the Old Testament states quote unquote, we're saved the same way by faith and grace. I'll be gracious to you, I'll be gracious to you. Blessed is the man who Lord doesn't impute sin. He was gracious to David. David committed the sin of murder. He put it away. But the child died. Somebody paid the price for it. Follow me? The Lord has always been full of grace and faith. He hadn't changed. They were saved the same way. You want to know where Jesus is in the Bible? He's all over the Old Testament. Who do you think Jacob wrestled with? And then he prays, right? In Genesis 48. And he says, Elohim, who carried me from all my youth, Hamalak, who redeemed me from all my evil. So he said, God, he's saying, God, the angel? You can also say, God, the son, too. God, the angel who redeemed me, who's a kinsman redeemer? Who is that? Jesus Christ. Or, in this sense, Jesus, not Christ yet, because he hadn't did not anointed yet, not the anointed salvation yet, but Jesus, Yeshua. I explained in the last video. 
the angel of the Lord, you should not, instead of Metatron, uh, the, or the lesser Yudevabi, which is not lesser, Yudevabi, they call him Metatron, actually, they now they do, he used to call him Yehoshua, Jesus. What are you saying, that Jesus is an angel? No, the angel of the Lord is God. I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you, there's no difference. The angel of the Lord is the Lord. They're the same, just a reflection of the Lord. If you look in the mirror and you see your reflection, is that you? That's your reflection, it's still you, if you move it, you follow me? <laughs> that's how. That's what the angel of the Lord is—a reflection of the Father. If you see, what does Jesus say? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Case closed. <laughs> so Jesus is all over the Old Testament. He's the salvation of God. What? Who do you think parted the Red Sea? Awake, awake, O arm of the Lord. Is was it not you that parted the Red Sea? What did Moses say? Stand back and see the Jesus of our God. He says, the Yahushua of our God, Jesus. Translate to English, to Latin, Aramaic, Greek, Latin. It gets to Joshua and then it goes to Jesus. See the Jesus of our God. The arm of the Lord, right? In Isaiah 52, the Lord has made bare his holy arm. All the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. If that's true, why would it ask to whom under the arm of the Lord being revealed? Then it talks about a, the arm of the Lord in the form of a man who's beaten, abused, dies because and for our sins. But, it, it, but he's, if he considers his soul an offering for guilt, He'll prolong, his days will be prolonged. He doesn't say how long. He'll see his children, Isaiah 54, uh, he's his children. Who the heck is that talking about? He ain't Israel. He's talking about Jesus Christ, the arm of the Lord. See? So Jesus is the arm of the Lord. He's always been there. It's the salvation of God, man. The salvation of Yahweh. Yahweh has always been Yehoshua, Jesus. So Noah was right. <laughs> he's just, it's the same, same way. He's always there. There wasn't a man named Jesus, but it, and, but there was Yeshua. Always. He's with him from the beginning. There are other areas. I mean, it's not a big mystery here. So yeah, when John, Moses wrote, I mean, Genesis 49.10. Shepter not to part, a scepter will not depart from Judah or a log area between his feet to Shiloh comes. Right it is. Who do you think that is? Coming in on a donkey? Dipping his clothes in the blood of grapes. What well, says in Isaiah 53, only the Lord does that, Hashem himself. Yeah, that's, who do you think that is? Whose right is it? There ain't no man's right, or even a, a descendant of David. Technically, who is the real king? Samuel, they rejected me, I should be king. Because the Lord, Yudevabe, Yove is the king. You mean Yove and Jesus are the same? Yeah, they're the same. Mm-hmm. Of course, my fellow Jews would not like me saying that. Mm, sorry, but that's what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me. You know, that he is. I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. So, I hope that you, you understand this. That going back here, in the statement of faith that I'm giving you. Okay, you notice I'm not saying Trinity or anything. I don't look at God as a personification or all. You can say that if you want. God doesn't exist in three different people. God just is. Her Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. To me, that includes Jesus. The Holy Spirit is something that emanates out of God. I don't look at the Holy Spirit as a person. It's power of God. Jesus is a manifestation of God. The Ancient of Days is a form. I mean, if you, I, I'm not saying the Trinity is wrong when you say it, okay? It's not my understanding given to me to call God a person. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We believe he exists in three persons. I believe that's an insult to say that. For me. See, if a man thinks something is sin, it's sin to him. Like Paul said, to me that would be not right to say that. But am I saying people that say that are wrong? No. Am I denying the deity of Jesus? No. Is it what doctrine am I teaching? Unitarian? They don't believe Jesus is literally God. I do. Just the same. So what doctrine am I teaching? Maybe I'm teaching Shema Yisrael, Yodei Vave Eloheinu, Yodei Vave Echad. Shema Yisrael, Yodei Eloheinu, Yodei Echad. But you're saying he's one. No, no, no. Let's say that the equation three or one, right? What's what does it equal? If there were th still one, the the equation. I don't care about the variables. The equation is God is one. The word ichad means a unity of one, not an absolute. See. But if you want to believe, if that's how the understanding's been given to you, I say this. What I would be worried about. If you're believing Jesus and you don't see that actually him and the the Father are one and the same really, in a sense, they're the same God, I would ask you why. 
first thing, I'm like, why? This the first thing I would ask you if you were just saying that God isn't Jesus and Jesus isn't God. I would ask you this, okay? If it says, if you believe that Jesus is the son of the God of the Old Testament, okay, every Christian does, okay? and we know God says in the Old Testament, I, the Lord, am a jealous God. I will not give my glory to another, okay? Now, jealous, not like us, but in the sense for the truth. You don't want people believing in lies. He's zealous for the truth or jealous or it's more like zeal than it is jealous. Like we would look at our petty jealousy as humans. Okay? If God will not give us glory to another, why does Jesus receive the glory as God? There are two things that we could look at it there. Well, he's another, but God can't, the God of the Old Testament can't do anything about it. Really? I mean, that makes no sense. Why would he be divided against himself? Huh? That makes no sense. Or you could say, well, you know, he's not really, he's just the God of the New Testament. You know, it's just not the, uh, I, I go to every, you go to every Christian, they got our Torahs in there. Every Christian's got a Bible. They got New Testament, you got Old Testament. They believe Jesus is the God of the Old Testament too. Yeah. Ah. My glory I will not give to another. But he allows Jesus to have the glory. You know why? Because he's not another. <laughs> That's the most logical. I mean, I know Jews might, if you're Jewish, I'm not telling you you have to accept Trinitarian doctrine. But let the Holy Spirit, okay, talk to you. And he should reveal this to you. I mean, in Revelation, about who Jesus is and who is him, and vice versa. And it's just, it's one God. And the Godhead. Do you know that Michael Gavrino, they're also God too, but they're God, they're, they're the eyes of the Lord. It's still, but they're not in the hierarchy in the Godhead. They're not, it's, I don't want to go, because it's going to get confused. All I'm going to do is confuse you if I start telling you. Let the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. Ask him and you'll receive. That's all I'm going to tell you. It's not that important, actually, to go with this. We serve in one. And the Father loves us and we love Him. And in the end, we'll be praising the Father because we want to. And we'll all be one big happy family. We'll be the, we get our new bodies that we obtain in the resurrection of the dead. We hope to, to obtain the to translation of saints and the resurrection of the dead. That's our hope in Jesus Christ. As He was risen, so shall we'll be, we be in the last day. Either alive or dead. Caught up like the Theolosians talks about and Paul talks about it. Eh? So we'll all be one. Again, in John. Father, I pray that the disciples are one in themselves, as you and I are one, and I pray that they become one in us. I rest my case. That's the future. Eh? Oneness, whatever. So when the Messiah comes, when he returns, he'll declare the name of the Lord. It's just going to be he who is, always. He exists. That's his name. Lord is there. He who is. What's so hard about all this? So that's why a lot of times I look at Christianity sometimes being foolish with the with some of the doctrines. And it, it, like the Trinitarian doctrine. Not, again, if you just understood what I'm saying, then you know what I'm about to say is not necessarily against that. But where is anywhere in the New Testament that wasn't added in the 4th century, right? That actually shows the importance of believing in that doctrine. you got to believe that God is triune and you're not going to be saved. Where does it say that? That's, Paul never wrote in any of his letters that that's, that's a requirement for the faith. However, if the Holy Spirit dwells with you, he should be revealing to you that Jesus is. Comes through the, he's the arm of God. The arm of God is God. <laughs> the word that comes out of your mouth is your word. It's you. It's you. It comes out of your mouth and it's still part of you. Your arms are part of you. You reflection in the mirror. When I say the, the angel of the Lord is a reflection of, of God as him. He is God. And God is him. You know, manifest in the flesh, preached among uh, men, the scene with angels. See the mystery of godliness? He talks about that, of righteous of God. He is the righteous of God incarnate. He's not just a normal man, what I'm telling you. I mean, we don't have his DNA. If you did, you'd find that the mitochondrial DNA would be human. The nucleus DNA would be unknown. It would, it's not that of a man. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that. 
Oh, you're preaching God, man. So I'm like, look, it's this is the, how we how God comes into us and we come into Him. This is how, in the end, that we're all part of God. This is how it happens. That's it. I mean, it had to come this way. It's you say, well, these other mystery religions and God coming down the those none of them talk about repentance, about uh, about uh, 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 none of them, not any of them do, none of them talk about repentance. None of them have. Uh, 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 and there's no other Bibles, but the, the, I could show you all kinds of prophecies in the so-called Old Testament that are definitely pointing to Jesus. Some I guarantee you've never heard of before that were shown to me because I asked for years because I had a great consternation who Jesus was. I wanted to know. I'll show you some amazing stuff that the Holy Spirit showed me. Prove it to you. You got it. So that's in the uh, Old Testament. Or what you call the Old Testament. To me, it's just the Word of God. You know, we're not under the law. And a lot of people, again, when I said earlier, have a misunderstanding of the law, of what that is. And I hope I cleared some of that up for you about that. If you're being inspired to, it's good that you study the Torah, what's called the law. It's a good thing, okay? You don't have to, not a requirement. To make your walk forward, to, if you're a person who seeks knowledge, wisdom, enlightenment from God's word, it's still God's word. Read it. Don't look at it as a requirement, but look at the spirit of it. Let the Holy Spirit teach you what the meaning of it is. That he teaches you what the true meaning of these laws are. And it could go in your heart. You would have a, a clear understanding of it. And you'll have even a greater love and affection for God once you know. See? Right? I'm not telling you you're required to do that. Or that it's necessary for salvation. It's not. But I do believe it will make your walk for. So I pray in Jesus' name that people have listened to this and received it well. And uh, Father in Heaven, I hope they do understand that your whole word, whether your Torah, your Testament, it's a glorious word. All your words, all, all that, that we know that letters can work death. Even the letter of the NT if we don't have a Holy Spirit dwelling with us. But we know your Spirit gives life and the Spirit of the Law and the Spirit of the NT is what gives us life and your Holy Spirit by faith and grace, given to us freely because of the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus, that we receive this thing by his blood, enter into the Holy of Holies, where you're made clean to stand in his presence in the last day. Amen.